If you think VAR is bad in the Premier League, you'd be right. But as you're about to see, it's a lot worse outside the Premier League. So today we're looking at three VAR disasters from outside the Prem, from the longest VAR decision of all time to literally the worst refereeing decision I've ever seen. And we're going to kick things off with a disgraceful incident that happened in the Bundesliga. Now, one of the main complaints us Premier League fans have with VAR is how long it takes to make seemingly simple decisions, especially when they're spending minutes drawing these frame-perfect lines even my cat could tell you is offside just by eyeballing it. And it begs the question, how long is the longest ever VAR decision? Well, to find that out, we have to look back to a game between Mainz and Freiburg in 2018. So at the end of the first half, with the score seemingly at 0-0, the players began to make their way off the pitch for half-time. And while they were walking off, the ref was called to the monitor for a penalty check. Because VAR had spotted there was a potential handball in the final play before half-time. And sure enough, when the referee looked at it, this Freiburg player clearly handles the ball, so Mainz should be awarded a penalty. Now, you and I can take a look at this and confidently say, that's a penalty. Let's say that takes 10 seconds for us to decide. Guess how long it took the Bundesliga referees. Not one minute, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six minutes to decide that was a handball. Six! Just for context, that's double the length of the longest VAR decision in the Premier League. And by the time they decided it was a penalty, the players were already in the changing rooms doing their halftime team talk. So the ref had to come in and say, oh yeah lads, turns out you got a penalty. And all the players from both teams had to stop their halftime time break and walk back out onto the pitch just so Mines could take the penalty. And considering the Blaze had just been sat down for the last six minutes, he took it excellently well, dispatching it into the bottom corner to make it 1-0 to Mines. Listen, I'm perfectly okay with VAR taking its time with these decisions to make sure that it's 100% certain with whatever it decides. I think we all are. But when it's taking as long as it takes Lewandowski to score four goals, then we have a problem. But... At least it was the right decision. Unlike number two, where VAR was so bad, the referees actually had to apologize. Now, the reason why VAR's so good is because it can look at decisions from different angles. Let's use the example from the World Cup, where it initially looks like this ball goes out of play, but when you switch to the top-down angle, you realize that it's actually just in. And given we already know the extent to which multiple angles can be so important, it blows my mind how referees in Australia can still be so bad. So earlier this season, Adelaide striker was initially shown a red card for this challenge right here. And from the referee's angle, you can see why, because it looks like he's gone in out of control and with a high boot. But the other angle showed that something completely different actually happened. Firstly, this angle shows that he won the ball to begin with, so he wasn't out of control. And this angle shows that the contact was actually made with the lower foot, meaning that he never touched him with the higher one. So is this a foul? Yes. Is it a yellow? Maybe. Is it a straight red? Definitely not. But luckily, VAR is here to save the day. And when given all of these extra angles, it decided to just stick with the red card. Honestly, I give up. What is the point in having VAR if you're not even going to look at the other angles it's given you? It's insane. And the decision was immediately met with a firestorm afterwards too. Look at the replies of the tweet under the red card. Honestly, I've never seen this many football fans on Twitter agree on something in my life. And thank God a few days later, the referees reviewed it again. And this time they decided to rescind the red card and apologize for making the error in the first place. Not a good look. I think this just shows how important it is for VAR to look at all the angles when it does its decisions because if something like this happened in the premier league it would be meltdown but not as much of a meltdown compared to what i'm about to show you which is definitively the worst bar decision of all time now all of the decisions we've looked at so far have been subjective that's to say even though those decisions might seem blindingly obvious there's still an element of human input needed to make them however the decision i'm about to show you is the only time var has been objectively incorrect categorically wrong and it happened in the Serie A when Juventus played Salernitana. So with literally five seconds to go with the score at 2-2, Juve striker Milik comes in clutch, supposedly winning the game with this header. Everyone went crazy thinking they had just won the game. And amidst the chaos, we got the alert, checking goal, possible offside. But for what? Milik was well onside, but it wasn't him they were checking. It was Bonucci. See, although Bonucci didn't touch the ball, VAR was checking if he was interfering with play. And while he does try and head the ball, he doesn't connect with it at all. And as the clip clearly shows, doesn't affect the outcome at all. So it definitely shouldn't be disallowed here. Well, VAR thought Bonucci was interfering and brutally ruled this goal out. But this is where it gets way worse. Because shortly after the game, a new picture of the incident emerged on Twitter, showing that VAR actually missed this player standing by the corner flag when they were originally 
constantly measuring their lines during the game. And he's playing everyone on side, including Bonucci. Meaning that even if Bonucci was interfering with play, he's still objectively not offside. It's bad enough the goal was disallowed to begin with, but the fact VAR missed a player altogether is unforgivable. Plus, it denied Juve a last minute winner, the worst decision of all time. And it's moments like this that somehow make me thankful to be a Premier League fan.